Here we come, walk down the street. We get the funniest looks from everyone we meet. Hey, hey, we're the monkeys, and people say we monkey around, but we're too busy singing. Ladies and gentlemen, it's the Bump Monkey Mafia. I'm Frankie V. Double T Turbuckle Tim here. C Rye the Good Guy. And ladies and gentlemen, we have Mr. CJ Ward. How's it going, guys? What's up, CJ? Awesomeness. Uh, Awesomeness. Loving being here. Loving being here. I, I appreciate y'all having me on. Oh, man. Oh, no we... problem, man. We've been trying to do this for a while. <laughs> damn schedules, man. <laughs> if someone's not working, someone's sick or eating paint chips. Eating paint chips. Well, or... Tim loves to eat paint chips on his time off. Dude, so. the blue ones are the best. I'm right there with you. <laughs> yes. I'm not right there with you. Tim, Tim loves the gold one. <laughs> oh, with uh, the uh, the uh, metallic crap in it. Yeah. yeah. Man. You guys just thought I was crazy. <laughs> <laughs> well, man, you know, we went to uh, our first mid, well, back to our first mid, mid-style show, August 14th. I saw that date today. Okay. The first Sunday time show. we, yeah, the first time we saw CJ Ward in the ring, and I can't remember who you wrestled. He wrestled Double D. Yeah, Double D. Oh, that yeah. was Double D yeah. round yeah. one. Yeah. I was, I was trying to think. I was like, yeah. I don't know who I wrestled August Ward. And I was like, holy shit! I was like, this is amazing. And like that whole card. I mean, we basically went home later that day. That's and we a good were card. Like, Oh my god, today was amazing. It was, <laughs> it was awesome. But man, you know, it was great. Like the first time we saw you, and ever since that point, we've seen you on a consistent basis. You're always entertaining. <laughs> I appreciate you, it. You, I mean, dude, match of the night almost every time. You look so good in the ring. Thank you. Elbow drops off the ladders. I mean, everything. Dude, uh, I'll, I'll tell you what, like, I, I keep thinking one of these days I might switch away from the elbow drop because, like, I really hate missing it. <laughs> like 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 when people move, my hip hates me. Um, but every time I jump off of something and I hit it, oh my gosh, it's the best feeling in the world. Well, it's crazy because uh, I was talking to you a little bit earlier today, and I was like, man, this dude seems like he wrestled. Yeah. I was like, and that's what I pretty much told these guys after we'd seen you a couple guys. I was like, man, I've wrestled for a long time. I was always fat, heavyweight when I wrestled. Right. So obviously, I didn't wrestle, you know, at an athletic weight. But I was asking her, I was like, man, where do you wrestle? You're like, I didn't wrestle. I didn't wrestle. And I was like, holy crap. Right? I was like, that's crazy. Well, man, let's get right into it. Where are you from, brother? Durango, Colorado. Colorado. Go uh, go Devils. Go uh, Devils. <laughs> our, our football team actually really, really sucks. Yeah? And, and, and has ever since I can remember. Man, Colorado is always fun. Oh, dude, like. How can you how can you hate Colorado? Um, especially uh, Durango is such a small mountain town. You really yeah. can't like it, it's really hard to get out of and go places. Yeah. Um, so you really got to find things to do. And there's always something to do outside. Yeah. Um, it's close to the, the Silverton Durango's. This is the train. Yeah. 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 Forward. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Oh God, the tourists love the freaking train, <laughs> man. Um, Been there many times. <laughs> But it, it, it's a great little spot. Um, love it to death. Uh, love to go back from time to time. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. How, so how long have you been in the business, brother? Uh, I know, what, the way you wrestle seems like you've been in 10 freaking years. When uh, when did I start training or when was my start first? Training. Let's, let's started training. Started training probably July of last year. <laughs> Wait, holy cow. July of last year. July of last year is when I started training, yeah. Um, my very first match on a card was February 12th of this year. Jeez, I remember please. them telling that, yeah. yeah. Um, against Jake O'Brien. I mean, you know, what's funny. We were talking to Gavin Dixon last Saturday night, and he, you know, I, I was talking to him, and I was like, how long have you been in, you know, in the business, like, as far as, like, you know, when was your debut? And he's mm-hmm. like, last mm-hmm. December. And it makes me think of what you just said. It's like, you guys have been doing this for less than a year now, and you're like, you're better than half the guys on the damn roster. Man, um, <laughs> <laughs> dude, we... Humbleness, humbleness. Well, ref, yeah, humbleness. <laughs> we, we, um, we have a great uh, y- young class here in Oklahoma. Um, me, uh, Gavin, um... Will Chambers, as much as I don't like to say it, uh, again, as much as I don't like to say it, Prince Mahali. Yeah, um, Wait, who's Prince Mahali? Sorry, sorry, sorry. <laughs> I think you'll have another name for him, a more feminine name. Yes, 
Princess. <laughs> oh, Princess Jasmine. Princess Jasmine. Okay, okay, now I know who you're talking about. Um, uh, the Misfit, Dean Lambert. Um, uh, Lance Osborne. Um, trying to think of uh, the God, uh, Christian Temple. Um, we have some great, great young up and comers uh, coming up. Um, I. I think we won it. I think we all see the opportunity here in Oklahoma that's that's in front of us. Um, I I think we just won it, and we won it that that bad. So who trained you, brother? Um, I started off with Jake O'Brien. Um, he's the one who got my foot in the door. Um, started going up to uh, Compound uh, a couple times with him. Uh, trained at WFC. I I took my first bump in Compound during. And then um, Drake Gallows started training uh, over at Mid South, and we got word of that. And um, so Jake O'Brien and Drake Gallows uh, have kind of been putting me through it. Man, let's uh, let's go back a little bit. What yeah. was your experience before training with pro wrestling, and what was that one moment where you're like, "This is what I want to do." I went to WrestleMania 30. Um, I was in New Orleans for WrestleMania 30, and uh, Daniel Bryan, man, the the goat. You know, I've I've always been a wrestling fan. Um, I I got out of it for a long, long, long time, and then uh, I came back into it WrestleMania 29. So weirdly enough, and um, him and Kane worked that night against somebody. I can't remember who they worked WrestleMania 29. But that's when I became a fan again. And then uh, WrestleMania 30, seeing him with the belt, I remember at the time I was living in Dallas. And uh, I went home and I was like, you know what? I'm, I'm going to be in pro wrestling somehow. Um, at first I thought I was just gonna ref because I was like, who wants a kid that's you know, 5'7", five, 5'8", five, a buck 75? You know, I, I didn't think wrestling was possible for me at the time. I was like, I'll, I'll just ref. And then I went to an independent show in Dallas where I thought I was going to start training with them. And um, I saw the workers on there, and I was like, oh, I can do that. I can get this. I'm, I'm somewhat athletic. Uh, and so from right then, so yeah, so Daniel Bryan, specifically Daniel Bryan versus Triple H, that, that, that opening yeah. match, that curtain jerker of a match, that's what got me. Wrestling from there on out was just like, that's, that's it. Dude, that would be probably one of the coolest moments in wrestling probably the last 15 years when he won that. Oh. When you were there. I yeah. Mean, that's uh, awesome. I'll, I'll tell you what was crazy, man, is like uh, the amount of people that were pissed off that night that really? Daniel Bryan had won. You see how, how, how loved he is now and everything. I remember walking out of there, and there was this, this drunk guy, right? And like a few of us were doing the whole yes chant, yes chant. And there was this guy, and he was like, no, you guys will see. This will be the downfall of the business. It's all going down from here. And uh, I just, it, 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 it amazes me to see how much um, there was some loathing there, now how much everybody thinks he's like the goat, you know? It's funny you mention that because I don't know if you've listened to our podcast. We've oftentimes referred to you as a young Daniel Bryan. <laughs> <laughs> I've said that on multiple occasions. It's the facial hair. It's the facial hair. <laughs> um, I mean, just watching you in the ring and some of the like, some of your the way you guys carry yourselves mm-hmm. in the ring um, it comes across as the same. Um, I'm a huge independent fan. I followed ROH. I follow, used to follow TNA, not so much now. But yeah. Dan, uh, Brian Danielson. I refer to you as a young Brian Danielson. What's crazy is, is like I'm I'm just now going back and watching some of his stuff from ROH and some of the stuff from uh, was was it New Japan or was it All Japan? I can't remember what, what he did. I think he did All Japan. Japan. Um, <laughs> but I'm just not going back and watch some of that stuff and it, the the mat work he used to do there. I know WWE is not real big into their mat work, but the mat work he used to do there, like it's 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 all inspiring. Um, the submissions and everything. I think if I remember him, I mean, he always says he's a big Dean Malenko fan. I was a big Dean Malenko fan as a kid. Um, Dean Malenko, Eddie Guerrero, you know, the, I, I was a WCW fan more than I was a, a WWF fan because yeah. of the cruiserweights. Um, 
Man, I I guess uh, I appreciate the compliment. I mean, uh, yeah. it, it's 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 a massive one to me. So thank you. So what what would you? I mean, after you've watched a lot of indie wrestling, obviously. Yeah. What would you say would be your favorite indie match? Um, it's on YouTube. Uh, I, I believe it's Revolution Pro or Rev Pro yeah. uh, indie uh, promotion out of, out of the UK, and it's uh, Zack Saber Jr. and Marty Skrull. Um, they go about 20 to 25 minutes, and it is just from from the beginning of the match, from them locking up. There's the there's the psychology of okay, they're kind of equals, right? But Marty Skrull, the the his his little twists of villainy throughout the match as it leads up to the final spots. Um, Psychologically, 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 it's 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 great. Um, the fundamental and techn- I mean, Zack Saber Jr. is a technical wizard, right? Right. Um, he, it, it, it's, it's great. Uh, that's my favorite independent match. I watch that match at least twice a week. Did you watch the uh, Cruiserweight Classic? Oh, of, of, of course. Of course. Of course. <laughs> yeah. Man, that what so do you think solid, that dude. did for the business and WWE in a whole? Uh, I think it was fantastic. I think it was over like Rover. I mean. For guys like me, for for cruiserweights, it was, wow, this is accomplishable now, and I think everybody seeing that and, and the wrestling that was done in that series. Ooh, I mean, yeah. match after Ooh, match man. after match. Solid man. Um, and think of the guys like like uh, it got Cedric Alexander a yeah, job. Yeah. Um, it got Brian Kendrick his job back, yeah. and he has been he's probably you know him and Kevin Owens are probably their best heels on the card. Oh yeah, oh, especially yeah. on Raw. It's it's crazy, Brian Kendrick, man. It's like you would have thought three years ago this guy's done. Done. WWE. Now he's back on Raw. He might win the title at Hell in a Cell. And that's crazy because Brian Kendrick's always been a good worker, man, and he's always doing. Always it. have. Yeah. See, and I actually I haven't seen a lot of his old stuff yeah. back when he he uh, his first run with the major company uh, with the three letter. Um, yeah. <laughs> But uh, yeah, I, I think it's it's open doors, um, and I think it's going to be one of those things where if they continue to do it, which I think they will, hopefully, um, I think it'll continue to open doors, and I think it'll continue to um, inspire other cruiserweights to push their game and develop more. Okay. Go What's ahead. the number one cruiserweight in your eyes that's not in – the three-letter company right now that needs to be there for any promotion anywhere anything that, that you needs think, to be there like that you think deserves to be there and if they got there that they would outshine Marty Skrull. Um, my favorite independent wrestler currently is Zack Saber Jr. Um, I think I I don't think um, he's more the WWE style right now uh, and he even said he wants to go over and accomplish stuff in Japan more. Um, Marty Skrull, uh, for sure. I've actually, I just had a list pop in my mind. Marty Skrull, for sure. I think uh, the villain character is fantastic and can, can get over anywhere. Um, Osprey, uh, I, I think the stuff he can do in the ring. Like, like imagine a match with Will Osprey and Neville, or uh, even like a Ricochet and a Neville. Um, those guys definitely, hands down, 100% should be in the company and could make a lot, a lot of money. You know, it's crazy because, uh, you know, talking about the Cruiserweight Classic, and, you know, it's funny because, you know, when they did the, the brand split, you had Raw on Monday, SmackDown on Tuesday, no one really watched those, and then the Cruiserweight Classic, and that was pretty much the only thing I got. Excited. Oh, yeah. I mean, for me, it's, it's, it's it was every Wednesday night, NXT, and then the Classic. Oh, yeah. Um, <laughs> and I thought it was great what they did with uh, – Gargano and Ciampa, yeah. those weeks leading up to on NXT, going up for their match, and then the fall, the match falling right after that that one NXT show, yeah. great. Um, yeah, the Wednesday nights for me, like that was wrestling best night. night. Best yeah. night of the week. So, uh, what what would be your favorite pro match <sighs> from that three letter company, or not even from them? Yeah, yeah. yeah I mean, any R-O-H. other three letter company. Uh, <laughs> Snooka and Savage, or not Snooka? Um, WrestleMania three, Savage and um, uh, oh, not no, Snooka. Uh, uh, Steamboat. Steamboat. Oh yeah. my gosh! Wow, right? One of those guys. Yeah, uh, Savage and Steamboat. I mean, I use the elbow drop for a reason. Yeah. I, I I love Macho Man. So um, would that be as a fan? 
for somebody who's been mm. in the business? See, now that's a good question. Um, it differs. Yeah, absolutely. Probably. I hate Hulk Hogan. <laughs> but as a fan growing up, my favorite match was Ultimate Warrior versus Hulk Hogan. See, like, as a little kid, that just blew my mind. So then probably probably as a as a worker more than as a fan. I guess as a fan, <laughs> as as bad of, as, as a match that ended up being towards the end, um, the the very first pay per view card I watched was uh, uh, Sting and Hogan, Star K ninety yeah. seven, oh. and um, that was like the match for me at the time. That was that was the end all be all. I had to see that match as a kid. Um, young and stuff. That was just that was the shit, man. Yeah. Then you grow up and you're like these dudes are buttholes. Oh, and then <laughs> and, and and then the finish to that match was <laughs> awful, absolutely terrible. Did like like, Hogan? like like <laughs> like that's that's the downfall of WCW. They had the greatest build to a match of all time, and they squandered it. Tried to do the whole Montreal <laughs> screw job thing at the finish, and it was. It was a train wreck. Typical WCW. Typical yeah. WCW. Do God, something like great and then destroy it. Build up, build up, build up, and then. Yeah. <laughs> so let's uh, break up the... Break it up. There's a segment on here we love to call For an Object. <laughs> it is, uh, what would be your weapon of choice aside from the conventional uh, ladder, table, chair type Kendo of thing? Kendo stick, not allowed. Um, Sledgehammer not allowed. Sledgehammer not allowed. Stop sign not allowed. Oh, because the stop sign was it. Um, <laughs> uh, uh, um, I mean, so break a little here. Y'all just came from practice yeah. with me, right? Um, it was a plastic gimmick in the back. Some big old long oh yellow God, plastic. It's like, it's like a broomstick. <laughs> <laughs> I told you guys, this is it. This is what I want to use. <laughs> Um, so yeah, it's like a, it's so versatile. You can chop with it. chop with it in the corner. <laughs> you can just baseball swing at him. So yes, plastic yellow broom handle stick. Yes, Psycho uh, Mike's was a pickaxe. <laughs> I, I think we need yes. to get him evaluated. Yes, so I'm. Off. I don't ever want to be then in a hardcore match with Psycho <laughs> Mike. <laughs> him just pull out a pickaxe on me. I might run for the hills. <laughs> that I mean, smile on his face with that pickaxe. Now, now I'm intrigued to see a match between him and New Jack. I mean, oh my gosh. <laughs> The the shank versus the pickaxe. <laughs> <laughs> so who would be your your dream tag team partner? If you could go in with one guy, past or present, form a tag team and go from there, who would it be? Chris Jericho. Absolutely, I like it. Chris Jericho. Like it. Now <clears throat> doesn't matter. It doesn't, doesn't matter, matter to me. Every time every time he comes back from hiatus or I it, Every time he hits the ring to me, he is 100% golden. Um, his 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 charisma you could feed off of really easy. Um, I, I like to think that uh, kind of the wrestling style that we do is kind of the same. He's, he's kind of high flyer, but not. I'm kind of high flyer, but not. Um, I, I think it would be a lot of fun, and I, I – Chris Jericho, hands down. I mean, what do you think about his character now? Like he. he oh my gosh, it's, it's great, great, dude! It's the only good thing on Raw. You're on the, the list. Girls. You're on the list. What is the list? Um, the the <laughs> the drink it in, man. <laughs> love it. I love it. It's almost like they're setting up for one more face run with him. I I I think that'll probably be, end up being the case. Him and him and Owens because it's it's money. I mean, they can both talk on the mic. They can both wrestle their ass off. Um, why? Why don't you do it? Why? Why wouldn't I mean, it be a thing? I'd pay for, for that at WrestleMania. Oh yeah, uh, Kevin Owens versus Chris Jeff Jericho. For the oh title. my gosh! <laughs> and I thought, I mean, uh, as as a uh, person in the business, quote unquote, um, watching that match against him and Sami Zayn at uh, the last pay per view that they did. Oh. Everything he did, from 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 his bumps to his selling to his setups, everything was um, textbook. Absolutely textbook from start to finish. And he's howled, and he does it seamlessly. You know what's crazy about crazy about this? He'll go away for like six months at a time, go do his whole Fozzie deal. Yeah. Then he comes back and he doesn't miss a beat. Doesn't miss one beat. You know, I actually saw his band about four years ago here. I'm sorry. Well, no, it's funny <laughs> because when they opened up for Seether. And we went, and I'm just like, yeah, Chris Jericho. And, like, there's no one there. It was at Rocklahoma. And no one was there besides me and this guy with a Chris Jericho shirt on. <laughs> and everyone's like, who the hell is that guy? I was like, see, break the walls down, Jericho. <laughs> see it. 
<laughs> and it was a terrible concert. <laughs> like, all right, we got to get this guy back in the WWE. You know what's crazy to me, right? And I, I, I watch a lot of old nitros. It's, it's my favorite thing. Um, he that that song was still used for him back in WCW. Yeah. To break the walls down, and I I didn't know how that. Like, I want to know how they got that to carry over from there. Uh, to WWF and what the conditions were like, like, like did he on the rights to that song? What happened? Um, that's always kind of intriguing. <laughs> they flipped me. it like a thousand times though. It's what? like Triple H's song. They flipped that song into so many different like genres. Oh it's yeah. Like, the thing is with a lot of the WCW guys, I've noticed that like Booker T kept the same music. Yeah. So with a lot of the WCW guys, I don't think they just they wanted to repackage it. I think. Like they knew who the top talent was in WCW. Oh yeah. It was like we're just gonna give you what you already had, and you're gonna run with it. Yeah. I mean, Diamond Dallas Page, um, Booker T, all of them, same music as they had in WCW. Yeah. So let's uh, let's bump this down to a local level. Who would be your, I guess, dream tag team partner? At a On the local, local scene. level. Ooh. That's a good question. In, in state level. Let's, in let's state. do that. Yeah, in state. Probably. Oh, man. See, so the only person I've tagged with in state so far is Jake O'Brien. Um, that was a lot of fun. I I think Dean Lambert would be fun. Um, Psycho Mike. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> just just to sit on the apron and watch what he does in the ring. Um, that would be a lot of fun. And... Uh, you know what? I'm going to mark out a little bit. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to help his ego out. Uh, Drake Gallows. <laughs> I'll, I, will, I will gladly kind of uh, stroke that ego just a little bit. Just a little bit. Just, just, just put me higher on the card. And, uh, <laughs> yes. 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 <laughs> Man, that's, that's funny. Yeah, honestly, all those would be pretty – with you, and they'd be pretty, pretty solid tag teams, man. Um, so, you know – you said you've been in the business for a while. Um, what would you say the state? And we talk. We talked to Psycho Mike about this, and Psycho Mike's what, fifty years older than you, probably. <laughs> and you know, ten years ago, ten years ago, Psycho or Psycho Mike, independent wrestling in Oklahoma was doo doo. Well, I want to say doo doo. Um, fair at best. Okay. And so, ten years ago, you might see one or two solid matches on a card, probably one. Now you go to a Mid South show, any show in Oklahoma, and uh, it's solid, dude. Yeah, like, every match is solid. Yeah, um, I love the matches that we have. Uh, WFC, they just had a crazy card. Um, BCW, uh, I heard uh, had a had a crazy showing the last ma- uh, show. It was a good show. Um, Empire, I keep hearing about how hot that crowd was. Um, yeah, I think right now. Uh, so the question is: this the state of independent wrestling in general, or independent wrestling in Oklahoma? Oklahoma. Oklahoma. Well, from what I've gathered, like I was saying, I think the current group of people in the state want Oklahoma wrestling to be good, and there's no reason why it shouldn't. It should not be. Um, it should be great. Oh, Oklahoma, you know, was part of the old territorial system. We we've had great wrestlers come out of here. Um, there's there's absolutely no reason why like uh, you know uh, Tennessee still has a solid independent scene. Um, Missouri has a solid in- independent scene. Um, there's there's no reason why Oklahoma shouldn't. Um, we've we've been around this. We've been around pro wrestling more. Uh, I think uh, people in Oklahoma are are clamoring for a little bit better wrestling. And uh, we youngins, we we want it. We want it so bad. And I bring think, it. I, I think we see the potential and we, we, we want to destroy it. There's, like I said, there's absolutely no reason. And if you come out, we're gonna we're gonna put everything on the line for you. I mean, we're gonna we're gonna try and send the roof off every time we're out there. Now I've said this in, in podcasts before. Uh, you know, we hashtag it all the time. You know, support local wrestling. And I've said on the podcast, one hundred percent again, man. One hundred percent. If you are a wrestling fan and you live in Oklahoma, you'll have your butt at these local shows. Period. Absolutely. And 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 there's live pro wrestling 
is so much better than than watching, watching it through a TV yeah. screen or a computer screen. Live, there, there's something about the the, the feel of it. You yes. you get into the match more. You get into the characters more. And you're gonna have even compared to going to like a raw live, you're gonna get better interaction between the fans and the people in the ring because we care about you. Um, those those guys on Raw, those guys, even the guys that come from ROH and everything, they're here because they're booked here and they want money. I don't get paid that much. <laughs> I get paid enough to go have canes after a match, um, and yes. that's really about it. Um, what I am doing out there, what what we are doing out there, uh, is everything for the fans. Um, we are trying our absolute hardest to do the best we can, and I. I think it shows. I think the proof is in the pudding. I think we're right there. Uh, go support live independent wrestling. Exactly. What, what we do here. Shows, man. What we do here is we review mid south shows. Oh, perfect. So we're going to review last Friday with you. Except Great. we're going we're to change this up a little bit. We're going to change it up to where we're going to go to match number two, and we'll end with match number one. <laughs> All right. I wonder what's on match number one. What could it be? So we started off the night. With Aaron Nill and Gavin Dixon going uh, tag teaming against Dustin Bosworth and Chris Crody. This segment started when Gavin Dixon comes out, challenges the biggest beast in the back. Out comes uh, Crody, oh, then out comes so Bosworth. Big. Jesus <laughs> Christ, these guys. Jack. Yeah. And uh, Aaron Nill and uh, Gavin got the win here. Man... Aaron Neal, it's always good to see him. Love Aaron Neal. Aaron Neal, man. We've been, we've, he's been in the business for, what, 15 years now, roughly? Man, maybe longer. Maybe longer, yeah. Can't, can't say enough good things about Aaron Neal. Um, Aaron Neal gave me my first pair of boots. Um, right. he's, a, he's a really good brother. Um, actually, all four of those guys. All four of those guys are great. Uh, if, if any of those four guys are on a card, y- you want to go see it. Oh, yeah. I think we made a new friend this past weekend in Gavin Dixon. <laughs> yes. Uh, <laughs> we made a very good friend in Gavin well, Dixon. Five times. Five times. Five times. Oh. Um, we'll have to tell you the story. Yeah, later, yeah. yeah. Way too much time. <laughs> well, we've already decided this story will be when Gavin's on, which yes. will be here very soon. I will, I will make sure to listen. <laughs> yes. Yes. We moved on to uh, O'Malley going one-on-one with CRD, Canadian Red Devil. O'Malley picked up the win here. Two two staples in Oklahoma. Uh, yeah, John exactly. O'Malley, fantastic, absolutely fantastic wrestler. has has been doing this for a long time. CRD is a staple. CRD uh, also has been here for a minute, and again, he he does what he does, and fans love him. Oh my gosh, oh, yeah. you go up to Tulsa, and I, I've seen people wear oh, other CRD masks. There, yeah, <laughs> uh, you know great. O'Malley. I love O'Malley, and he taught me a lot of things when I first started. Um, he was the type of guy, if you would just listen, and, and he, seeing that you were listening and paying attention, oh, yeah. he would pour into you. Yeah, absolutely. He uh, In the back, he he is watching every match, and if you go up there and you ask him for a, a critique, he <laughs> makes sure to really listen because he will give you every bit of a critique. Uh, great guy to have in the locker room. Great guy to see out in the ring. Yeah, man, it was an entertaining match. We moved on to the Saints of Pro Wrestling, Scott, Sean, and Chaz Sharp. And this was kind of a little bit of a revenge match. Uh, Bad Boy finally got back in the ring for the first time in three years. Which I had never seen before. Everybody yeah, used to dude. tell me. <laughs> everybody tells me, oh, Bad Boy. Bad Boy used to be this thing. Bad Boy used to be good. After that match, I told him, like, dude, you and I got to get in there and at least, you know, spar a little bit. His, uh, his technical prowess was a little bit better than I was expecting. Yeah, man. He, uh, I remember back in the old days he was tag team champions with Tom Jones and yeah. Oh, wow. Phil. I didn't know that. A long time ago. I didn't know that. Uh, that was the first title he ever held was with Tom. They held the tag team. And then Glenn still, uh, they did held the tag team titles a couple yeah, times. for a while. Wow. Yeah, I and mean, they actually had a really good run right around a year, year and a half. Wow. So, but uh, he was supposed to tag team with Kevin Morgan and who would have thought that the Sanders twins or Sanders sisters would somehow track Kevin Morgan down and they're they're kind of bothersome. Um, 
I've I've had some run-ins with <laughs> with them uh, back when Jake O'Brien and I were tag teaming every now and then. We we had our scuffles with them and um, come across these two <sighs> jack wagons. Yeah, they don't they they don't play nice and. Um, they don't smell nice, by the way, either. The dude, they yeah. smell terrible. Have you? You haven't been well, in, the we're in the ring. Oh yeah, Saturday. you. Oh. Uh, we do also know that one of them likes biscuits. We uh. Yes. Biscuits. Let me recap this, and we'll <laughs> tell you what happened on Saturday up in Guthrie. <laughs> um, Rick Russo comes out. Rick's been. That dude's been in this business forever. Uh, absolutely. Stoutest old man. Um, dude, that's a jacked old and man. Dude. For an old man, dude, you, you don't know some. His, his, his shoulders are wider than I am yep. long. I mean. <laughs> you know, you hear that term, an old man might whoop your ass oh, that's, when you're a young kid. I'm pretty sure he'd true, walk, whoop all our asses. Oh, yeah. So, uh, the Saints pick up the win. Start boo. the beat down. On, yeah, boo. Start the beat down on Bad Boy and Rick Russo. Out comes Kevin Morgan to make the save. Get a little bit of payback, beat down the Saints a little bit. Another but, gigantic man. Yes, that man <laughs> is a monster. Yeah. It reminds me of Matt Morgan so much, and it's not because his last name is Morgan. But, I mean, dude, he's, he's a big, he's a big, big dude. Than Matt Morgan. <laughs> he's a <laughs> monster. Yeah, Matt Morgan's not even wrestling anymore. <laughs> well, guys, we moved on to uh, Mid-South. Re- well, sorry, touch on Guthrie for a sec. So, uh, we did BCW Saturday. Right. We're actually going to review that a little bit later this week. And uh, we're in the ring promoting belly to belly jelly. <laughs> nice. I mean, biscuits He's, and jelly. Yeah, I mean, Tim loves biscuits. He loves. We're fat and we love, we love jelly. jelly. Well, out comes. Uh, well, I don't even know which one it is. It's hard to keep up. They're the both littler fat. one. Um, They're both fat and ugly. You can't ask <laughs> so, me because we, we get a mix up all the time, too. <laughs> the it's very easy to do. Uh, comes out, gets in the ring, and apparently was pissed we took ring time because he wasn't getting any. Wouldn't get any ring time or wouldn't get any biscuits? Um, probably both. Uh. And Tim doesn't share his biscuits with a hell. No. I mean, you take a biscuit from Tim, you oh, might as well sign your damn death warrant. Good to know. Good um, to know. Comes out. Um, he's pissed. Puts his hands on Frank. That's not and, cool, And uh, not cool, man. Hashtag not cool. Yeah. Hashtag not cool. Hashtag asshole. <laughs> Hashtag <laughs> leave the jelly alone. <laughs> we had a friend come out and help us. Yes. Uh, our buddy Actually, Mikey too, comes and down. Fred. And Fred. And if that is true, Fred was there Fred too. was there as well. And if uh, Mikey and Sandra Fred. Twin wanted a biscuit, he got a damn biscuit. He got Mikey it. put the biscuit in his mouth. <laughs> and... <laughs> <laughs> the jelly was saved, and we moved on to the show. But oh, that popped me. That's good. <laughs> yeah, I really enjoy that. That's. Oh, I wish it could have been there. We, we're getting this podcast heat now. Like we have it with Princess Jasmine, and now we have it with the Sanders sisters. Well, you know, any more heat, and y'all would be full blown heels. Uh, yeah, <laughs> yeah. What they say? If you're doing something right, you got haters. Yeah. Oh, true. Haters be hating. Yeah. Well, we moved on to a rematch from a uh, week before. The Urban Misfits, Trey Gallows and Dean Lambert, went one-on-one, one-on-one, two-on-two <laughs> with the Mid-South Chicken Express, Tyson James and Will Chambers. <laughs> and, uh, that was good, too. <laughs> yeah. Dean and uh, Drake picked up the win, man, so the Express have not been on uh, a good roll the last about week and a half. You know what? Uh, and it's... rolls everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, uh, need some roll, <laughs> jelly with those rolls. <laughs> you know, they've been—they were hot and they were just <clears throat> wrecking all kinds of people. I used to love them, man. Um, mm-hmm. Will and I kind of came into this thing together when uh, Will was still training and I first came in. It was him and I competing back and forth between who was like the quote-unquote number one in the class, and um, used to love Will. Will and I used to hang out all the time. Great stuff. Uh, the the turn that they've made is kind of disappointing, but so this whole loss, uh, you know, they they kind of had it coming. They did, um, and they went up with pissed some, off a lot of people. Oh, oh, dude, you that just be running in everywhere. And, <laughs> yeah. Man, the the stuff they're doing it in the beginning of the show with the anthem. I mean, I don't want to break this into a political conversation or anything. Um, there's a time and place for it. Uh, the wrestling ring is not one of them. Um, so yeah, serves them right that they lost and they they don't have the belts anymore. I hope they continue to lose for a minute. Uh-huh. Yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah, uh, uh-huh. Uh-huh. <laughs> the downfall begins. Yeah. Um, we moved on to uh, 
I want to say the main event, but it wasn't the best part of the night. Oh. Mid South Wrestling Alliance, Oklahoma champion Psycho Mike went one on one with Father Patch. Psycho Mike picked up some win, guys. First title defense, successful. Isn't that crazy? Um, love it. Good, oh. good for him. He, he, crazy. Well deserved, man. Well deserved. But the night was not over. No, but, but it was. No, it wasn't done yet. It wasn't done yet. But it began with the night. We had a four way. <sighs> Fatal four it way. featured four competitors for a chance to become the number one contender for the Mid South Wrestling Alliance heavyweight title. Which, which when they first told me, okay, so like this is something I didn't know. This is for a number one contendership. They, this is something that was not discussed to me <laughs> when uh, <laughs> when uh, they announced it. When we were going to the ring, was the first time that I heard it. Hi, um, so <laughs> hope you win. Oh yeah, I was like, oh, I, go. <laughs> I was like, oh, thanks. Now I got instantly turned this notch up a little bit more. I didn't prep for this. Yeah, <laughs> um, but it, it was it, what I mean. What can you say? It's uh, the number one contendership. So yeah, all of a sudden your heart rate jacks up and the adrenaline goes up and. Damn. You went out there and you put on a show like you always do. You defeated Pitbull, Mikey, and Reggie Lincoln. And you, my friend, are the number one contender for the Mid-South Wrestling Alliance. Yes, so it is. Ah, man. And uh, I've got to go up against Bud Barnes now. And that's going to be a, a yeah, hell of a test. You, uh, Bud came out with uh, CM Burnham. and uh, am the dough. After a long match, <laughs> you know. Dr. Bounty Hunter. After a long match, it was, you know. He, he might have kind of laid a little bit of a whooping on you. Yeah, well, okay. He squashed you. He squashed you. Uh, I'm surprised you're here. <laughs> when he got squashed, I was like, damn, we got to find another interview for Tuesday. <laughs> and, and, you know, my ribs were still hurting from the from the Wednesday before going through that, which I oh, yeah, I thought I had a chance. I thought I had a chance. You know, he, he made the challenge. Like, you know what? Anything's possible. Um, And now I got to do it again, and it's – He's he's hard to get around. That that uh, gravitational pull just pulls you right in and sucks you <laughs> it's up. A typical force guy. Yeah. It's a real thing. But you know, um, I'd love to see Bud Barnes versus Turnbuckle Tim in, <laughs> in a biscuit match. Oh, let's book <laughs> it. We can do it for the Buff Monkey Championship. Yes, CJ, we actually have a belt. You have a belt. We yeah, do we have, have a belt. belt. Does it have a monkey on it? No. no. Uh, it the, uh, we actually already have a champion. It is my fat cat. <laughs> yes, it's kitty. Kitty. How, how how did the kitty how did the kitty go over? Um, kitty. She's, she's fat. She's just kind of <laughs> fat. Doing the podcast, trying to decide which one of us should be champion one night. She just comes in, jumps on the table, knocks the mic over. And so that's, it. that's it. That's it. She's like, um, bitches, screw all of y'all. Yeah. <laughs> this is my title. This is my table. This is my podcast room. So, man, where does that rank as far as your win since you started going? <sighs> man. It's got to be up there. I mean, I I was cruiserweight champ for a little bit. Um, the the Tom Jones Invitational, oh, huge, man. huge, absolutely huge for me. Um, I know what Tom Jones means to Oklahoma, and um, going through that tournament was one of the funnest things I've done. Um, this has to be right up there. Uh, it's absolutely incredible. If you would have told me on February twelfth, the night that I debuted, here I sit on October eleventh. And I'm the number one contender for the Mid South Heavyweight Championship. Oh, yeah, Wouldn't yeah. have thunk it. I would have thought you were smoking some crazy tobacco um, from Colorado. <laughs> <laughs> so just to be clear, that's almost eight months to the day, guys. Eight months. To Holy the day. cow! Yeah, I, I, I guess it is. I didn't. Yeah, I didn't think about that. How do you prepare for a guy like Bud Barnes? Speed, speed. speed. You got to practice hitting them ropes and see how fast you can get from one end to the other. Um, or at least that's the strategy I'm I'm going to take. I hope he's not listening. Um, well, he's I guess for fast, for I mean, for the viewership, I, I guess he is listening. But I hope he's not listening to this part. Um, yeah, speed, speed, speed. Uh, can try and knock him off his feet, which I don't think anybody has done since he's gotten the title. Um, and that's going to be a real challenge because he's a lot bigger than I am. <laughs> Um, you know, and, and I mean, he had a hell of a street fight, or last man standing match with Buster Cherry, man. He's been in some pretty violent matches the last couple times out, so. Yeah, and I. He's, he's got the belt for a reason. Yeah, there, there, there's a reason why he has it. He, he's he big. Now, <laughs> yeah, he's. <laughs> so, October 21st, you have a street fight, brother. A trick, trick or, or treat. treat. 
Oh, Trick or Street. Ooh, I like that. Trick or Street. Trick or Street. Oh, I like that a lot. Yeah. Um, with y'all's favorite heel. Prince Ma. <laughs> Prince Ma. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's going to be awesome. I'm actually looking forward to this. Um, I've gotten into a few tuffles with Prince Ma. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, <laughs> I want to see the debut of the yellow broomstick handle. Yes. Oh, yes. yes. This is going to happen. It's wrong and wrap it around and hit him with it. Oh, well, I, I've got to note that. <laughs> uh, I'm, this is, I, so one of the very first matches that I came to last year was the Drake Gallows uh, trick or treat street fight. Um, so it's just, just kind of fitting that I'm in it a year later. Um, I I think it's gonna be a lot of fun. I can't wait to get my hands on a bunch of Reese's pumpkins and Prince Bahaha and uh, slap them around a few times. We we will. He likes to be yes. slapped around. Yes, he does. Well, man, we appreciate having you on, dude. dude. I appreciate y'all having me. Um, not to uh, take away from the sensational CJ Ward, but uh. Also, that night they're gonna have Callista versus Nikki Knight. Man, anytime these girls go at it, the the girls are hot right now, man. Um, every single one of them, same thing. They're they're putting on the best show possible. They're putting on the best fight possible. Um, yeah, that first Mid South show we went to, we saw Skylar Slice take on Erica. Oh, Erica's and great too. Oh blown God. away, dude. That yeah, amazing. E- Erica's fantastic. Skylar's fantastic. Uh, Nikki obviously is is, is incredible. Um, they're doing a hell of a job, and uh, yeah, I actually can't wait. For, I every night you'll see me up there watching the women's match because yes. they they tear the house down what every are your time. Thoughts when you have to follow that match? Shit! <laughs> 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 uh, <laughs> Holy crap! Yeah, uh, uh, they they pour their hearts out out there, and the fans love them. And it's like I said, it's it, it's really hard to go out there after that and say, "All right, let's do this again!" Yeah. Yay! <laughs> well, we're also uh, having a costume contest that night as well. Ooh! You should dress up as Prince Mahahaha. Oh, give him a little taste of his own myth. Yeah. Uh, see, I don't know. I have to really exaggerate it. I'd have to. We have the perfect entrance music for you. The perfect. We're not gonna give it out right now. Just all, right, all, right, all right, all right, all right, all right. Fair enough. Yeah, I'm. I'm willing to to take a listen and see how it goes. <laughs> but yeah, man, it's uh, it's gonna be a fun night. October twenty first. CJ, it's been a pleasure, brother. It's been fantastic. The best of luck to you. It. And you always have the support of the Bump yeah. Monkey Mafia. CJ Dub. CJ Dub. Um, guys, we will be back Thursday night this week. Thursday or Friday, we're going to be recapping BCW from last Saturday. Yes, it was yes, an amazing yes. day. And next Tuesday, since we're off this weekend, we're going to do a State of WWE. Ooh. We're going to do a long, an hour-long podcast of a State of WWE and uh, ROH, TNA, get all that. We have a couple guests with us Tuesday. And uh, Myron is not going to be able to make next Tuesday, uh, but uh, former Ultimate Fighter contestant Myron Dennis will be with us. Uh, two weeks from today. Two weeks from today. And uh, that's all I got. Folks, we love you. We thank you for the support. You can find us on Facebook at Bump Monkeys. You can find us on Twitter at Bump Monkey Mafia. Find us on YouTube. Folks, have a good night. Bump Monkey out. <laughs>